Hi everybody, my name is Charles with Haunted House of Oxford and today we're going to go over a little bit of a prop control thing that I'm going to be working on this year. Uh, so I went on to Fright Props and I, I decided that I wanted to, to animate one of the rooms in my, my haunt this year. And the plan is that the room will be fairly dark and then when somebody walks in it'll automatically trigger a strobe light to go off and trigger the boogeyman prop that I have at the far end of the room. Now the problem with that is that, well the included sensor on the props is not very sensitive. Uh, people that have, have bought store-bought props will, will know this. Usually you have to get pretty close for some of these things to go off and the light conditions can drastically affect how your props activate or don't in certain conditions. So I wanted something that was going to be a little bit more reliable and controllable. So went to Fright Props and I ordered like this the Peekaboo Junior controller, and some other goodies. So today I'm just going to go over how that gets hooked up because I figured it out last night. And just in case anybody else is trying to do something similar, this is how I did it. All right, so here are the main players in this this game we've got going on. We've got the Peekaboo Junior prop controller. I'll go over a little bit about why I went with this one instead of some of the other ones or what I didn't need on the other ones, which is why I went with this one. This was about $82. This box here was for their PIR motion sensor. It's got a 15-foot cable, so plenty of reach, a nice wide view, which if you watch their videos could be a benefit or a drawback, so you may have to adjust for your, your viewing angle to make sure that it's triggered in the right place. And then over here we have an AC relay control box thing, uh, also about 35 bucks. both of these were. So all told, I'm at about 150 bucks into this. So yeah, not the cheapest way to go about this, but we'll talk a little bit more about this as we, as we go along here. So uh, this box up here is actually just a portable power station, so that way we can go ahead and actually power this stuff up. And then we're going to go over some of the other stuff as we get these into view. So let me go drag them over and we'll show you the wiring and everything and talk through it real quick. This is gonna be a pretty short video. I just wanted to give people an idea of how I've got this set up to run. All right, so first up in this mess, we've got the AC piece. Now this is an adapter or an accessory, I guess they call it for their controllers. You see, we've got four outlets. We've got an always on, so that one's not trigger affected at all. So whatever's plugged in here will stay on all the time. Works great for like powered speakers or something like that. Normally on and then two normally off. And that basically means that like the normally off ones, whenever a trigger signal comes in, these will automatically turn on. Whenever a trigger signal comes in here, the normally on one will turn off. That would be great if you wanted to have a lamp on in the room, but then when the motion gets tripped, the light goes out and then maybe something gets turned on elsewhere. So strobe lights or, you know, flash crackers or anything else like that. So this one will turn off. These two will turn on anytime there's a trigger signal coming into the side. As with most of the prop controllers and the props, you can actually just pull the connector itself out, makes it wiring a lot easier. You don't have to try to fish your wires through. And in a case like this, if you can see where those two screws are, well, they get kind of hidden. It'd be awful hard to put these wires in there that way. I'm just using some cheap 22 or 24. I can't remember what gauge this is, but it's pretty small. It's basically alarm wire. I bought it on Amazon. It was, I think, $35. Seems to be a magic number for a 500 foot roll of this stuff. So I just cut off a couple feet here to test this. So that's what we've got going on here. All right, now here we have the Peekaboo Junior controller itself. If you're only interested in the wiring, uh, you can kind of get an idea, but we'll get into more of that here in just a second, I promise. The nice part about these controllers, everything is color coordinated uh, or color coded, I guess I'll say. So for example, the power light and the input light down here, these are actually down here. So you're gonna see the power light will be green, the input light will be yellow. Up here in the top, it actually gives you three different options for your trigger inputs or whatever is coming out of this panel here. So it actually gives you your colors and that actually comes back, uh, works out really well. It made it so I didn't even have to hardly look at any manuals. But that's the controller itself. Here we have the motion sensor itself. So that's right here. 
So that's going to go here as well. And then off here in the corner, we have a strobe light that's just going to be plugged into our AC. That's going to be what we're using to test and actually go. The other nice thing is it does include a 12 volt power adapter and a barrel jack. And you don't even have to wire it into the plug. It actually just plugs just like that. So that's actually going to get plugged into here at some point. Now, for example, if we power this on, you'll see the light come on down here for the peekaboo. It'll take it a second to catch up. There we go. And now you can see everything going on here. So that's pretty cool. You can also see that the red light has come on on the motion sensor because everything's wired up. We're going to turn everything off for the moment real quick so we can set our strobe light up um, somewhere. I guess we'll set it here. You'll probably still see a flash no matter what. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and plug it straight into the normally off position. And we want this because we want the trigger Whenever something happens on here, we want the strobe light to go off. All right, let's get into the wiring real quick. On this side here, I actually had to look this up, but on this side here, we just use our red and our black into the positive feed, as you can see right there, on the trigger input for our AC box. On the peekaboo, our red actually comes over here to your C, your common over here. And then the black goes on to the negative input on this block here. The Peekaboo Junior can be controlled by the barrel plug or you can actually run positive negative into here as well but since I have the adapter we're not going to need to worry about that. Uh, but what you're going to want is your positive on the one side, your negative coming over here into the negative on this side and then we're actually sending positive from the positive side of this back out over to our normally open and that is so when we hit the relay button, we are closing the relay, which effectively is jumpering this, this trigger and actually activating our AC box. So that's how that works there. Um, don't forget this little jumper wire. If you do, nothing will happen when you turn on your AC box. Don't ask how I know that. These are the wires coming off of our motion sensor, right? So this motion sensor is powered. It does need power. It doesn't rely solely on just a triggering. So it does take power has four wires. You've got a red, white, black, and a green. This is where the color coding comes in great on this because it actually tells you right here, PIR, white and black, red and green. So quite literally, that's what we did. We took our white and black, tied them together alongside with the black for the AC adapter and put them all into the negative. The red went to the red. Um, so again, we kind of tied that in alongside this and they both went into here and then the green just goes into there. That's literally all there is to it, to wiring this little guy. The hardest part for me was just double checking and figuring out this little guy because my original thought was that, okay, well, this probably just gets set up in here like a normal, uh, like a normal relay switch or something. But we did have to have this power jumper in order to make this thing work. Again, there's a diagram for that on Fright Props website. So if you need to go look there, you can. Um, here's a little QR code. So if you want to try to read that with your phone, if you need to scan that, then feel free. All right, now that you can see we're powered up, we're gonna go ahead and program this. Programming these are very, very simple. What we're doing is we're basically programming a scene. There's plenty of videos on this, so I'll make it short. Whatever we want to happen when the motion sensor or whatever our trigger is, we need to tell the controller output on one or two or both of these relays, whichever, for however long we want to have happen. That means that you hold down number one or number two or both for as long as you want your device to be activated. Now, in a case like this, this only stays activated for as long as the relay is closed. If this number two, for example, was running out to a prop as a try me where it only needs that quick momentary, then I would only have to just hit it once for a second. But on this one, because I want this to go off for let's say five seconds, I'm going to have to hold down number one to keep this relay closed for five seconds to keeping the lights going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit record, then our relay, for hold it for five seconds, and then we're going to actually wait another five seconds before we hit record again to stop it. And that's to give ourselves a, a five second delay in between. So here we go, record. Two, three, four, five. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait another five, four, three, two, one, and stop. So the reason we do this is so that way when this activates, it's going to go off for five seconds. And then there's going to be a five second window in which the trigger cannot be activated again. And that works great for people that are walking by. If you want something to go off, but you want to have it 
time to reset for, say, the next group of people to come through. You don't want it going off constantly. That's exactly what we're going to use it for, and that's exactly what that is. Now, if we want to test that, we just hit the number two, tap two to play. And you can see the red light down here is flashing. It's going to remain flashing for another five seconds until the scene has completely ended. Right now, the trigger would not work until, there we go. Now, to make this work, we just have to put our hand over the motion sensor. Right now, again, the motion sensor is facing away, but here it is, and right now, see, red light is still on, I can't trigger it. Now that the light is off, we can go ahead and trigger it again if we want to. But what we are gonna do is power this down, and then that way, everything goes away. All right, and there you have it. Our motion sensing, strobe lighty, everything set up for our haunted house this year for our boogeyman room using a Peekaboo Junior controller, a PIR motion sensor, and the AC accessory. Now, they're all from Fright Props. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, I did use the Peekaboo Junior for one reason, or a specific reason, I guess I should say. They have many of these Peekaboo controllers. They have a Peekaboo 1, which is a single relay output with a trigger. There's a Peekaboo Plus. There's a Peekaboo this. There's a Peekaboo that. Some of them have audio built into them or a built-in amp to amplify audio. One has a built-in MP3 player. One does AC output all combined with everything. So there's a lot of flexibility depending on what your particular needs are. Now, in my case, I wanted the ability to run an AC adapter or the AC accessory, but not directly on the unit itself. But I also wanted to make sure that I had two outputs, one to trigger that, and then the other one to send the trigger to the prop itself to activate the prop all at the same time. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, that's just one tiny little part of what we're doing here. Uh, again, this is my first attempt or first foray into automated anythings with this. Everything previously was all used uh, using the Spirit Halloween 4 channel remote for certain props, and that works great, don't get me wrong. Um, and then just the built-in motion sensors. But the reason I had to use their four-channel remote prop is because some of those motion sensors just didn't work in the way that I wanted them to, uh, either because of lighting conditions or whatever. So this hopefully solves that. A little bit on the pricey side, but for the flexibility, I think it's worth it, at least to me. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.